Kwekwe, Mino Pajashik, welcome to In Digital Insights. Monique Manach and Dijnikos, Kitikinik and Nishnabek and Dojiba. My name is Monique Manach and I'm a member of the Algonquins of Barrier Lake. And today uh, I'm so pleased to have Theo Cathand with us. Um, I've talked with Theo before and I love his work. I just love what he does. And, um, and so you'll get to see some of that today as well. Theo is an experimental and narrative filmmaker. He's an indie game developer um, and uh, from the uh, Little Pine First Nation. And that is in Saskatchewan, I think I, is yeah. that right? And you're living in Toronto? Yeah, I live in Toronto now. Yeah, so um, mostly I've been known for like my film works, um, mostly like they're mostly videos, but um, I've also made uh, like indie games, indie video games, and, um, and I'll be showing you sort of like my process of like how to make a game in this workshop. So um, first of all, I usually make the graphics with Procreate, um, which is a application for the iPad and you use like the iPad pencil to draw on it. And it's a really simple program. So I'm just gonna show this like a uh, quick video is like about 12 minutes about like how to use procreate and i'll show it right now okay so i'm gonna show you how to uh, make a drawing in procreate so first of all i, <laughs> I will make a new i'll make a square um, this is our drawing um, to select we're gonna have like the color is going to be black of the um, the drawing and for the brush, I think we'll pick technical pen. Um, this is pretty basic. I don't want to change any of that. And um, here I will make, oh, hang on. I don't like that. <laughs> you can press this little backwards button to get it to go back. The opacity was down, which is why it was not looking great. So we'll do it again. Um, this is gonna be like a Saskatoon berry. And uh, we're going to make sort of like a kind of a berry picking game. So that's, that's kind of what it's going to look like. Um, but I want to actually add a layer and I want the layer to be underneath the drawing so that we can like color it properly. Um, sometimes this gets stuck here. Okay. Okay. So we'll pick a different color. Um, I want to pick like a purple. Uh, we'll pick this purple, uh, maybe this one. And um, we'll make the brush, make the brush bigger. Um, how do we do that? I'll, like pick a different texture, maybe the studio pen. And just kind of, just kind of color it in. And because it's on the layer underneath this, um, that that black outline will not be bothered if we like kind of go over it. So it should be fine. So I'll just color this in here for you. Um, what we can also do is we can fill it in. So I'm gonna try to do that by like just kind of like making an area for this to kind of because <laughs> because if we uh if we put in a color right now it's going to like spill over because this black is on a different layer so we'll just kind of make like a little whoop, a little border for it like that and then you drag this purple over here and it fills it in so um, I want that color to be a little bit darker though. Not quite a black though. Maybe like this, this kind of a purple. Do this. And I'm trying to remember what the inside of like a Saskatoon berry uh, seed kind of looks like. I think it's kind of a, like a lighter color on the inside of the little end though. So maybe more of a fuchsia. Maybe this little there. So that's the Saskatoon. Um, and if we don't like this background color, which I don't like because it will not work in 
unity. Um, we can do that. Uh, we can also sort of like make this smaller if we crop it, um, just so that it's not taking up such a big space when we bring it into unity. Oh, hang on. We can also go forward like this. <laughs> okay, back to this. So, um, yeah, we'll just resize, crop this a little bit. And um, there we've got a berry. Um, I'm going to make a copy of this because I would like select. So we go to select, copy this, duplicate. And then if we come over here, <laughs> if we come over here, we can make this a different color. So um, what I'm gonna do is sort of, yeah, we're on the right layer. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it this color and just see what it does. Yeah, I like that. So then, <laughs> then we'll come over here and uh, we're going to select these two and we're going to share them as PNGs. And um, it will just go to my MacBook. And that's how you make a, an image and take it over to MacBook. And then we're also going to do sort of like a, a bush <laughs> um, for these berries to be in. So we'll make another um, Maybe, uh, I guess screen size, it'll be like this. We're going to change the um, brush though to sort of like, I think maybe a texture. Um, no, we want something organic. So there's all these kinds of things you can do and there's all these different types of brushes you can make. Like you can make something look like it's a kind of like a rock or you know, different things. I think we'll use this paper daisy though, um, just to do a really basic sort of leaf, like bushy kind of sort of material. So um, I'm gonna give it kind of like a dark, dark green background first. So we'll just go drag that in there. And then, um, and then I want the brush itself to be like more light. So we'll pick that color. We've got this. And um, let's see, uh, try to make it about that size. And this is just really basic. Um, but as you can see, it's like, it's kind of too, it's too much of like a similar color. Like, so I wanna change the opacity just so it's like, a little bit more textured and maybe bring in also like a darker green over top um, maybe even fainter just to sort of give it a texture this is just like a basic sort of background though and um, I think I'll make it even darker here and And um, yeah, you can do all kinds of things in Procreate. I really like it as a program. So there we've got a background and um, select it. We're gonna share it as a PNG to sort of my MacBook Pro. <laughs> it's funny, you can see who my friends are in this video. <laughs> Um, okay, and then we'll do another one. Um, I guess we're gonna make a hand that will pick these berries. So we'll, I wanna go back to the black we had for sort of, no. <laughs> I wanna go like a like dark, dark black uh, to do the outside. 
we'll get out of this, we'll go back to sort of uh, to this technical pen and we're just going to kind of make like a rough like hand. So it'll just be like a thumb and sort of like some fingers here. Finger and <laughs> sort of like this little. Uh, oh no, hang on. I don't. I don't quite like that one. <laughs> I'm just gonna change this a little bit. So, you, yeah, you can like you can like delete things really easy here. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm trying to make this look like a real hand, so I'm just kind of editing in here as, as I'm drawing. Go back to here, put this in, okay. And then, um, I think we'll stay on this, on this level. I want like, I want to have a brown hand, so. Let's see if that's the right color. Mm, that's okay, I guess. Um, maybe I want to add some detail to it. Like, be nice to have some little sort of fingernails, thumbnail. I have weird thumbnails. <laughs> okay, so there's a hand. Um, just our hand for our berry picking. And um, again, I wanna get rid of this background color because I don't like it and it would make it look weird when we bring it into Unity. So now we'll crop and resize this. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, I think I turned it. And you want to make it really, really small because it's going to become a thing that we're going to play with in Unity. So you don't want like a bunch of extra sort of like material around around it. Uh, that seems good. And then we will um, select this. You can also title them, which I'm, I'm not right now because I'm going to do it when I bring it over. But um, it would be easier to know what their files are by titling them. But I'm going to export it to, where is it? Oh, hang on, my computer's off. <laughs> okay, my devices, that's my MacBook. We'll send it over there. And it got sent. And um, that's pretty much like how you can do basic drawings in Procreate. Um, there's a lot of other things you can do, but this is just basically for the purpose of this game we are going to make. So that's Procreate, um, and then when you're like making the video game itself, uh, I make them in Unity, which is like a program that's, it's free to use if you have like a personal license. If you're like trying to make a whole bunch of money, they charge you for it, but like it's, it's easy to download from the Unity website. And um, there's a, an application called Unity Hub, and then there's another application called sort of like the Unity Editor. Anyway, you download both of those and I'm going to show the video for like how that works now. Um, go here, new project. Um, I don't know about this editor version. We're going to do, I believe, um, we'll do this built-in render pipeline and uh, no, we'll do this one. Name the project um, Berry Picker, and um, put it there. Select organization. That's my old name. <laughs> um, and we will create project. So now it's creating this project Berry Picker. Um, what we're in right now is Unity Hub. So Unity Hub is 
kind of like an overarching thing that has this like unity program in it so this is the unity program itself um and i will probably edit this out um so you don't have to watch it open up but it has to like install all the packages and things it open um what we're gonna do is this is the assets folder um and we are going to make a new scene in this folder this is called sample scene and i believe this is what's open right now um we can rename this we'll call it berry picking okay and um we're going to want to uh start a sprite folder create a new folder called sprites and in this folder we are going to import some um, assets which are going to be from let me see documents this berry picker assets all these guys these are all the sprites we'll use so this is the bush <laughs> um and that's kind of like going to be our background so we don't have to really like think about it too much right now it's just going to sit there um and we are going to bring in this hand but it's not on the right level so we have to give it a different position let's see uh, there and um I don't really like how big it is so I think we should sort of like scale it down a bit um, there's like a way you can scale it down in a more uniform way but um, I'm not really doing that right now so here, just make it a little bit smaller um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to make this main camera a child of this hand um, and we also need to change this uh, we're gonna take this as a player because this is what our player is gonna be and um, we also need to give it a, a rigid body rigid body 2d um, I think maybe never sleep, collision detection, continuous, um, what else? We don't want any gravity on it or it's just gonna like fall. Um, so no gravity. Um, and material, I think that's fine. We're also gonna add a component. We're gonna add a polygon collider. Um, and that just makes a collider out of this. And colliders are necessary to make it um, not, it gives it sort of like a material substance, otherwise it's just an image that could pass through everything. So um, I think that's all good. Um, uh, I think that's good. And now uh, we also need to go back to this and we need to add some box colliders so just go in here um, no it's gonna be in here box collider 2d and you have to this is a 2d game so all of the things have to be 2d um, so we're gonna make this let's see 20 15, uh, 1, okay, and then this, 17, so it's just, you can see it's just a little bit bigger, <laughs> just a little bit bigger than this bush thing, so, and we're going to give it like an offset, because I don't want it to be like in the middle here, so I'm going to offset 10 offset 11 that's probably good um actually no i think i'll make it 
offset nine. And then, um, I think that's good. And then we're gonna add another box collider because we have to make four of them. So this one will follow kind of like the same thing. The offset will be nine and it will be, this is one and it'll be 17 just to make it an even number. And then we've got a box collider on each side here. So and then we've got to make the top and the bottom. So that's another box collider. And this one, now we're going to make it a different shape. So probably 20 um, and we'll offset it. don't want to offset it. We want to make it um, this. Okay, the Y, we will offset it by... No. Okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. You can kind of see, see where it is here. Um, I want to make it a little in a little bit more though because I think um, I think it will be easy to see the outside of this bush if we make it too big um, as you will see when, when we start moving around and then we're gonna add the last box collider to make the boundaries of our game and this one make 20 one <laughs> and this will be z minus six so it's kind of like in yeah in the general ballpark uh my dog's trying to chew on something um i think i want to make maybe seven yeah sorry i had to take something away from the dog and now he's upset so so there we've got like the boundaries of our game are these box colliders here around the outside of it and um, I'm gonna just press play on the game and you can see what it does so this is like it's reloading things with this scene high that was highlighted this little play button is um, showing that it's playing right now and um, as there's no player controller, this is all it can do is have these two things sit here. But because there's no, um, <laughs> there's no gravity on this hand, it's not falling, um, which you would see it falling if there was gravity on it. So that's that. And now um, we are back to scene. <laughs> and... Uh, Next, we are going to add sort of like the player controllers to this. So, <laughs> uh, we need a new script called uh, player controller create an ad, and now it's going to uh, <laughs> it's going to give us some options here in like another application when we open this to edit it I apologize for the dog noises so the visual studio is like a sort of like a companion um, sort of thing that like it does the coding for you well, you have to do the code yourself, but it's like, it's where you put your code that the game has. So I'm going to show you how to, um, ignore that. I'm going to show you how to write code for a player controller. See that this, um, this application, this like script is already named player controller. And, um, it's got using unity systems, collections, generic, and engine and then it's got this void start here that's like where your 
<laughs> where your um, sort of actions begin. So first of all, uh, we need to do a public float speed. Okay. Public float speed. And then you always want to do one of these little guys at the end of your code that kind of tells <laughs> tells the computer that's the end of that. Um, and then after that we do another sort of variable called, and we want this one to be private because we don't need to really do things with it in the editor. Rigid body 2D. These things will like sort of automatically suggest what code you're going to use, which is very helpful. RB2D. And that RB2D is just kind of like how we're going to call this rigid body, because it, it's like having a nickname for uh, a, a, a sort of function. Um, and then, so we, then we go to void start. Usually you never put anything in these brackets. They just kind of sit there like that. And they don't need uh, one of these little semicolons to end it. So um, first of all, we have to tell this that rb2d get component And again, it will sort of like, it gives you a lot of uh, information when you're editing these. And then um, we got to put it in here again, rigid body 2D. And again, it will suggest it so that it's easier for you. And then on the end of this, you want to put, oops, these guys. And then another little semicolon, because we're done that comment. And now we go to void update, because this is when things keep getting called. And in here we put if input dot get key. And then we do, oops, the key code. Key code, oops. Dot escape. And then this is what happens if, uh, this is how people will quit the game if they get stuck. Um, it will go application dot quit. And these little guys again. And then another semicolon. So that's just like, um, you kind of want an automatic escape for people when they're playing your game, just because it's polite, <laughs> um, and they're easy to put in. So that will always be there if, um, if someone wants to quit the game. And then now that is the end of what is happening in these brackets, so we're going to go down here and go void.
want the semicolon at the end to finish that sentence. And then um, we are going to do float these little semicolons and then we also want to create vector 2 movement equals And then another one of these little guys on the end. Oh. Okay. Hopefully that works. Um, and then we need to do one more thing. We need to get this rigid body 2D dot add force. Put it in brackets, movement, and then times speed. on and that is our code to do a player controller so now we're gonna try it it automatically is set to zero which means you can't move it at all so you, I want to add speed I'm just gonna add a one right now just to start and then we'll see if this will move at all um, and hopefully it does and um, you can kind of see like, obviously, we don't want the background to be doing that. Um, there's things to fix, but the hand is moving, so that's good. Um, but we need to change things first. Rotation of the player hand, and I think that's what's going to stop it from going around in that sickening way. Um, we'll just see here. It goes to the edge. Yeah, it will stay in this position now because the rotation is off. Um, we should actually make the background of this not this blue color. Um, I will look up how to do that. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, I think we can start putting in the berries. So we'll go back to these sprites. And we'll go berry one. Obviously, that's too big. Um, we need to shrink it. So we'll just shrink it a little bit into like more of a berry sized thing. And uh, we'll put it here. And um, we'll drag another one onto here. And we'll also shrink that. to a more reasonable berry size and we want like a few of these berries because these are kind of like what the game is going to be is like picking these berries so here's another berry and we'll also shrink it 
and uh, put it here. No, I'll put it over here. Oops. Hang on. Hang on. My dog's being a jerk. Okay. Move it over here. And uh, one of these berries over here. I only want five berries because this is a very small demo we're doing. And I don't want to like confuse people. So um, we're just going to like do a little bit. You could also make prefabs of these berries, which if this was like a real game I was doing for work, I would probably make a prefab out of the the purple and the, the kind of fuchsia berries and then um, just arrange them everywhere because we're going to have to do some other things to these berries to make them interactive, which I will show you in a moment. Um, let me make that smaller, a more berry-sized berry. Size berry. Okay, so we'll take this berry and we need to make it interactive. So we're gonna add a circle collider. And I believe it should be a trigger. Um, and it kind of automatically makes it the size of what, it, what these berries are. Do another circle collider is trigger. Another circle collider. Oops. Back. This trigger. Another circle collider over here on this berry. Circle collider. And this one, we will also add another circle collider. So now they all have circle colliders. Oh, I think maybe this one not a trigger. Okay. I apologize for my sad little dog. Um, we need to give these a tag also. So we're going to make a new tag and we're going to call it berry. If we were making a more complicated game, there might be different types of berries <laughs> in, in these. Like, you might want to make them do different things. Um, but as they are now, I think this is what we'll do with these. So, um, make this a berry. And I'll show you why we're going to call these all berries. Todd, you cannot be a jerk while I'm working. So this is, I think they're all berries now. Berry, berry, berry. Oh, this one's untagged. So we want to make it a berry also. And this one is a berry. Okay, so now they're all berries. So we need to make them do something uh, when they get touched by the, the hand. So. As you can see, this is sort of the list of the berries. Berry 2 and Berry 1, that's just because they're different colors. Um, and they do start numbering them as you get more of them. So like Berry 2, because there's three of them, Berry 2 has no number, and then Berry 2 has a 1, and then Berry 2 has a 2. So that's kind of how it goes. And now we need to make a script that will sort of like allow these berries to get picked. But um, first let's just see how it plays. The berries are there and the hand can kind of move over them, but obviously it's not changing anything. That one is acting more like a collider that you can't go through, which makes me wonder. Oh no, there's something going on. Okay, it's not supposed to do that. <laughs> And I'm wondering, I think I know why that is. I will fix that. That is trigger. Now it's working. And I think it's because the bush, which is the background, had um, 
is trigger on it and there's something about like if there's two things that are triggers then they won't they won't collide properly so and I'm curious about why this berry is doing this and these are like going right through so I'm gonna see what's going on with that so we'll turn this off back into scene mode let's see what this berry is doing Okay, it doesn't have is trigger, and now it has is trigger, so the hand should be able to go through it. And um, we are going to add a destroy script onto these berries. So we'll start with this one. New script. We're going to call it destroy. Wait. Pick berry. And it's a destroy script though, but we'll call it pick berry. And it will happen when the hand touches the berry. So in the first bracket, we need a public. No, we need a private void. on collision enter 2d and you these ones where it's like 2d you kind of always have to put 2d in unless you're because the other ones are for the 3d um unity and that's not what we're making so it won't work <laughs> and see it automatically fills in kind of like what we need and then now we'll go here to this and we need if A little bracket collision dot game object dot compare tag and then we need a little bracket again berry and then we need one of these guys on the end Wait, just try to make it all nice and neat there and then we need another little little curly guys we go to destroy little bracket game object and then a little thing and um yeah we'll see if this works i don't think we need these so i'm just gonna delete them We might need them though, but we can put them up top if we do. And there has to be, see each of these brackets, this is C sharp um, that we're using. Each of these brackets has to have an end to it. So, and you, they'll kind of match. So you'll see these two are highlighted. These two go together. And then these two on the end are sort of like the end ones. And then of course you always want to go save all. thing and now we'll try this again oh it's not colliding we might have to take off is trigger because that actually calls something else so we'll try that we'll get rid of is trigger oh no <laughs> I might need to do something else oh that one works though okay so one of them works I think maybe some of these are still triggers and some are not I will check and make them all be able to disappear like that first one. Berry script was on um, just that one berry and not on all the rest. So I've put it on all the rest and um, they should so they should disappear as you can see. So now we're able to pick berries so that's awesome. Um, I think we need to change the background of this I'm gonna do that in a second ground of you know that blue box that comes around when we like get out of the color this is kind of like what it is and um, I would like to eyedropper this green so we'll make it that color and um, now we'll just give it a shot and see if it looks different in this out um, 
the berry still works and you can see the background is now a green you would probably want to make the background kind of like bigger so that it like actually covers the screen though and um, right now it's not really doing that we're in assets create folder we'll call it audio and um, we'll open up that folder and we're going to import an audio file import new asset this is this low bloop file we're going to import it and um, now we've got an audio file to play in our game and um, I'm going to make an an empty game object or let me see create um, actually I'm just trying to think of the best way to do this actually I'm going to I'm going to create an empty game object or no an audio source I'm going to create an audio source and it's in here so you can see it and um, it has this space for an audio clip and we're going to add a clip we're going to add this low bloop just double click it and now it's selected in there we don't want play on a wake or it'll just play it over and over and we don't want it on a loop or it will like continuously play it we just want to play it when sort of the berries get picked so we're going to make another script for the berries that is um, an audio clip script so uh, what should we call it I'll call it bloop audio create an add going to edit the script so this is bloop audio um, and we're gonna make a like one shot um, a one shot audio clip so what we've got to do is I think these are fine the using system collections and generic and all that is fine um, we need in in this upper section we need public. And I'll just move that out of the way. Public audio clip. Uh, I'll call it impact just because that's what it's called in <laughs> in this like code I'm following. And then, um, oh, and then we want to go to make another one called audio source. And then we're going to give it a little nickname, which is also going to be audio source, but with a lower case, um, because for some reason, the nicknames have to start with like a lowercase. That's kind of how you write them. And then we go void start. Here we go, audio source. Equals, oops, equals get component. source and see it automatically completes it and then we got to put the little two little brackets on the end here and another one of these guys and then um, 
We don't need this. We need void on collision. Enter. And then these little guys again. And then in these little brackets here, we're going to audio source dot play one shot down here. Click on that. And then we'll call it impact, which is calling it from this up here. Impact zero point seven F that's just the volume and we'll get one of these guys and that should be all we need so um, we'll save that you always have to save it to like well I mean you should be saving things along the way which reminds me we should also save this which I will do right now <laughs> well I'm gonna show you what I ended up doing because the bloop audio script wasn't working so I redid it um, public audio clip bloop um, this told you tells you what the sound effect is audio source is audio source um, I rewrote this to get component audio source play on awake false which means it's not going to automatically play as soon as the game starts and um, get component audio source dot clip means bloop so that calls this audio clip um, which is in a field on collision enter 2d which we didn't have before um, and then this is pretty much the same and I put the bloop audio onto the hand so that changed um, I actually tried the bloop on a bunch of different things um, but anyway here's the game as it stands right now um, okay here we go you will be able to hear the bloops. So this hand is picking berries. We could do other things with it, you know, like you can, you can make, um, sort of, you could make the hand like grab when it's like getting a berry. Um, and then that's all of the berries they're all gone so what you could do at this point is you could make it that um, the the berries you'll win if you pick all the berries or maybe some of these berries are like not as ripe as the other one so maybe these would be lower in points um, you know you could do a bunch of things and obviously there is like a bloop that was still going um, and I'm not sure what that was but if I had more time I would figure it out um, but right now this is the game I'm not gonna like actually build this game but I'll show you the build window um, so build settings this is where you would make your game when you're like ready to output it to a computer to be a standalone game um, iOS is for like obviously iPhones WebGL is if you want to play it in like your web browser Windows, Mac, and Linux is this is for like the desktop um, thing. Dedicated server I've never used. Um, so you've got Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. And uh, with Mac OS, you've got an option of Apple Silicon, Intel 64 bit, or Intel 64 and Apple Silicon, which is what I keep it at. Um, and you can make you can make a Windows build. Yeah, so. And then when you're ready, you just go build and run, and uh, it'll do a thing for you, and you'll have a game. Um, yeah, you can also, you can add other things, like maybe there's a timer for, like, you have to pick these berries in a limited amount of time. You would probably want to make this background bigger so that you don't see kind of that flat green on the outside. Um, but this is, like, basically intro to Unity, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> and now I'm going to talk about both of those videos. So um, between Procreate and Unity, it's it's like a very simple process to like make a game really. Um, there's a lot of uh, sort of like, you know, I guess technical difficulties that you have to like problem solve as you go. Like if you noticed in the Unity video, there was sort of at the end when I was doing the audio um, for the berry picking game, which is the game we made. Um, 
sort of there was like the the original script didn't work out so i had to find like a different script that would work and um, that's kind of like typical of like a unity video game sort of process like when you're making them um, there's a lot of resources available for learning how to make unity games on like the unity website and also on like there's subreddits for unity game developers which are really good to read because you can like upload your problems and people will give you solutions um and i believe also stack overflow is another place where people go to find code and um the good thing about making code in unity is you can just kind of like um copy other people's code like it's not it's not really a bad thing to copy people's code and and just kind of like adapt it for your video game um and then i'm also going to show just sort of a clip of this game i made called carmilla the lonely which is it's like a two minute clip it's very short and um and it was a game where i'm like it's more extensive than the berry picking game because the berry picking game was just like you just like touch berries and they disappear <laughs> and that's kind of how you pick the berries but like the Carmilla game is like a vampire game with ethics. So there's like a dialogue system where you have to have conversations with people in the game. And um, and there's like ways to like fall in love, but you have to like access certain kind of conversations to get that. And there's like ways you can like get blood as a vampire. But um, if you just bite people, you'll like, you know, the, the townspeople will get upset at you and you get kind of staked and die <laughs> and um but you there's like one person in one part of the game who's like open to like giving you blood consensually and so that's the person you talk to so this is kind of like just a, a like a trailer for that game that i'll play now Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any anything specific that um, I would tell people about getting into indie game design. I guess just, you know, it's it's something, you know, you have to like sort of learn sort of the language of like what the coding is like, um, like the destroy function we used in the berry picking game is is like you know, that that's that that's called the destroy function. And then there's like also these things called like health bars, like if you wanted to give somebody points where they can like lose or like gain health that might kill or not kill their character. Like, um, and there's also I don't know, it's like it's a very wide field of like learning and like it's a very steep learning curve, but unity makes it pretty easy to like understand, I think. Um, and, and there's like a pretty good community out there, of like game developers, and there's like other indigenous game developers and, and sort of like game jams and stuff that happen. Um, and there's also places where you can show games like, um, well, like Carmilla is available on 
itch.io, uh, which is a website for, for gamers to like upload and download games. Um, and you can charge money for it or like ask for donations. So that's like a nice way to sort of like get some money back. Um, you can also like apply to grants to make games like like to the arts councils like um, Canada Council for the Arts uh, sort of funded me for Carmilla, um, which was nice. And there's still it's still kind of like a learning curve for people on on juries to understand what it means to make a video game. Um, so, you know, usually you would write like a design document that explains sort of like the game you have in mind and what you want to do with it. and and I always kind of like give like kind of a reason why that game is important. So like when I wrote the game design document for Carmilla for, for Canada Council, it was like, you know, saying, talking about ethics and consent and negotiating consent and how that was like, it was kind of like, it was like meant to be a game that was like educating people about those things. So um, I'm wondering, Carmilla sounds like a great idea and a great way to uh, approach the idea of consent. Um, I'm wondering how you how you got there. What drew you to to using vampires? Yeah, I guess because I was thinking about like sort of like the needs of a vampire that they have to like, you know, have blood to like survive, but obviously in all the vampire stories that's like a very sort of violent way to live and I wanted to have like a vampire who wasn't like violent in ways that were, you know, that were harming people. But the, the interesting thing about Carmilla is you can harm people. Like like in the in the trailer, like she does bite sort of like the person who she's supposed to be dating. But like it's, you know, it's like it gives you options to like you can harm people, but there's always like a ramification. Like there's not it's not like you can just get away with it. Whereas I think in like, you know, all the vampire stories, they, you know, like they sort of hurt people and then just like go off into the night and nothing ever happens to them. But there's like, if you live in a society, there's like consequences. So I wanted to sort of like explain that, but, but in a game form, which would be more fun. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, it, it really looks at society and how we depend on each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're surviving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many. Yeah. yeah, which I, I I love that. And when you um when you first started learning Unity, um, was it hard? Was there a lot of like uh, learning curve? Yeah, I mean, like, because you have to have settings at certain things. Like, like in the in the video we just saw, like, there's this part where I'm trying to like figure out if like these sprites are like there's a little setting that's like is trigger. And it's either, and it depends like how the sprites connect with each other, if that is trigger is like selected on or not. And um, I think we took it off in the game, um, but it's kind of like just learning like what settings mean what and how they work. It's like a lot of like, like I didn't go to school to learn Unity. I like learned it through like the internet and like a lot of YouTube tutorials, which is also a really good way to learn it. And um, and through sort of these these things online, these like you know forums and things, um, so it was kind of like a lot of a lot of like googling a question. That was like basically sort of like how I would learn. And if I got stuck, I would Google it. There's one when I was doing the dialogue system though, because there's like a specific group of people who make that system that you could actually go to them and ask questions for like how to do something, which is something I needed to do because their system has like a different form of code than Unity's form of code. So like trying to get those two forms of code to talk to each other was like complicated. <laughs> so yeah, but but I mean, I think if you're just open and if you're one of those people that really likes troubleshooting technical things, I think video game design is like really like, it's a fun way to make art. And um, yeah, cause the challenge is part of the fun, so yeah. So what do you think is next for you? Um, next, I'm making another game um, this fall at Western University as part of like a residency. And it's going to be a, a video game about repatriation. And it's called Repatriate Me. And it's about this um, 
this this man's spirit who uh his human remains are being held in a museum and he has to like fight his way to the museum director's office to ask to be repatriated back to his community so it's gonna be more like a like something a little bit more like super mario or like like where you're like kind of like throwing things and jumping on things and stuff so it'll be a little bit different than like my other like more floating head games so yeah so yeah and also like the the character controller will be different because it'll be gravity whereas the other games i've made you kind of just float around and do things so yeah that sounds amazing i love that taking repatriation and and making a because it it makes it so understandable for people yeah yes that the spirit is fighting its way to to be repatriated yeah it helps people to that means both to the belongings and to the the remains as well as to the community Mm -hmm. yeah in a way that's not threatening or angry or you know Mm guilt-ridden but challenging and and fun yeah which is making repatriation fun that's that's amazing yeah yeah i have to figure out a way like what the what the final like confrontation with the museum director is gonna look like because i always try to make it like in a in a game style and i'm just like not quite sure how the mechanism is gonna work but i'm sure it'll be interesting so yeah have you um have you been to western have you spoken with people there um i just got hired for like the artist in residency recently so i've just been like in conversation with them about that but yeah my my proposal was to do this video game so um yeah they have some like sort of resources there i'm going to use like for recording sort of like the audio because because a lot of the video games i've done have used like other people's sound effects that they've recorded so i want to like record my own and and sort of make a better like soundtrack for it yeah that would be fun. Well, when you're there, there's two profs there, Dan and Mary Lou Smoke. Okay. Uh, Mary Lou is from Batchewana and Dan is Oneida. Okay. And they had, uh, there's a community radio program they've had there. It's the longest running community radio program in Canada. Oh, wow. And it's uh, called, and it's indigenous and it's called Smoke Signals. And they were both given um, PhDs from Western. And I believe they're teaching there now. So if you have a chance to look them up, you, you, you'll love them. They're amazing, amazing people. And I'm sure they would be helpful. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Look. I will look them up. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming out and talking to us today and, and showing us your videos and telling us what you're up to. And it's really helpful. Uh, ICMI is looking at doing some of these projects. So we're going to be keeping an eye on what you're doing and (laughs) how busy you are yeah (laughs) okay because we yeah this is something we want to get into yeah thank you so much thank you for today